Hello and welcome to Great Delta. Today I'm going to be adding some overhead electric lines to this area of track here, spanning from the farmland, which is where the camera is situated, over towards this uh, soon to be new branch line area. I've been asked a few times in the comments on YouTube and on Facebook whether I'd be going for any uh, catenary as I do run some EMUs um, but now I've decided to have a go at it especially with my recent additional purchases of my class 92s and class 90s it would look more prototypical to actually have some sort of power supply above the uh, pantographs so what you saw in the opening clip was me installing some of these single masts these are by Dapple, they're a long discontinued product but I managed to find two packs in my local model shop so I bought those and installed them they're quite easy to install, you just drill a hole and then the mast is threaded on the bottom and then you put a washer and a wing nut underneath the baseboard just to keep them tight um, what I'm going to do over here is I've got two gantries where the tracks meet to go over all of the lines to continue the electric wires um, over that area. So they are from N-Brass and I'm currently constructing them at the minute. They are quite a fiddly kit and they're very difficult to get right. So it's taken me some time but they're getting there. Um, I'll also be attempting to do the actual wires between all of the masts and that's where the majority of this video will actually be um, in terms of content so I'll be doing that with some guitar string and just soldering them together so I'll talk you through how I do that but for now I'm going to finish off the um, gantries and get those installed and then we'll see how it looks when, we, when that's finished just as a side note I'm only going to do this section of track I don't plan on doing the whole layout it's going to be way to uh, time consuming to do the rest of the layout and there's a few obstacles in the way now with the station canopies, my signal gantry and a couple of bridges which I have planned which might be effect which might affect that so it's just this area really just to have some continuity and um, I don't see many end gauges attempting it so it's something I wanted to have a go at so here are the two overhead gantries for the rest of the continuity to cover the tracks which are close together these are from N Brass. They are brass kits which you sort of fold and solder together, and then you will stick on the uh, registration arms and support pulleys as and where you need them. They're a little bit fiddly, and they haven't got much of a surface area to stick to the baseboard. So I've added these foundations just with some plastic card, so it gives a bit of a stronger stick on the board. Um, I've just painted them in some concrete by Rail Match. Right, I've glued the gantries in place now, just using some PVA glue. What I've done with the gantries is I've painted them in aluminium metallic paint. I think it's a rail match colour. And then for all of the details and a bit of the gantry, I've dry brushed it over with some weathering powder in dark rust colour. Those are the humble ones. Now before I move on quickly, um, if you don't know much about overhead continuity, that's fine, not many people do. And neither do I really, but I will tell you what I do know. So between each set of masts you will have two wires running nearly parallel to each other the first one is called the contact wire which runs along the bottom and as the name suggests that is the wire that makes contact with the pantograph allowing electricity to reach the locomotive now above that contact wire you have a support wire now that's job now, a support wire's job is to support as the name suggests the contact wire keeping it straight so there's no slack now it does that via vertical dropper wires connected between each wire and that supports it nicely. On these gantries you have a registration arm and a support pulley. The registration arm would be usually supporting the contact wire, however in this case I'm going to be supporting every bit of wire that I do off these pulleys at the top. Just makes it a little bit easier than trying to uh, line up everything perfectly. Now we move on to the actual catenary wires. Um, for this task I will be doing just the support wire, contact wire which lies flat and then the droppers between them. To achieve this I'll be using guitar string and a couple of reasons for that. Number one is its perfect thickness for it. It also is the right colour and, and um, finish as it shines. And it's good for soldering as it's coated in nickel which takes solder quite well. 
Now, I'm going to be using gauge 11. Um, this is tuned to a high B on a guitar, which is nice and thin, but it's also thick enough just to get enough solder on to keep it quite strong, as opposed to the high E. Um, now, with guitar strings, you can buy them in packs, or you can get them individually. Uh, these are a pound each from Anderson's, I think. Um, and you want to invest in the guitar strings a bit more. This is Ernie Ball. They're a well-recognised manufacturer of guitar strings. I ordered initially some guitar strings on Amazon, and these came. Now, all guitar strings come coiled like this. And when I took this out of the packet, it just turned into a bigger coil, which is not good at all as it was very curved and it was incredibly difficult to try and straighten it out. Whereas this one um, pretty much lies straight when you take it out of the packet. So there's a, well, it's a lot easier to work with. So take it out, as you can see it's in a coil, and then as I unwrap it, it wants to lie straight. Well, near straight anyway, a lot better than that, which pretty much just turns into a bigger hoop. Now just as a quick note, if you're using this video as a how-to and want to try and replicate what I'm doing, I have to just tell you that it is incredibly difficult, delicate and fragile and I've lost my patience several times over it. It's taken me the best part of 10 attempts to get something that I'm happy with which isn't completely rubbish. So do not be disheartened if it doesn't work for you. This just works for me at the minute and it is really difficult. So just as a pre-warning, so the first thing I'm going to do is the contact wire and what I'm going to be doing is taping it to this line which will give me a nice straight contact wire. Now although I said these guitar strings do lie straight it still has a natural curvature to it and what we're going to do is the contact wire we want this curve to be pointing downwards so the peak is in the middle pointing upwards and um, I'll show you why in a bit so we'll just cut it roughly to length so it sits a bit nicer whilst we're working with it. And you can see, oh, let's get it the right around, that the natural curve is going to come downwards. And now we can cut it to length. Now I like to use side cutters because they get a bit more of an accurate cut than angled cutters. You're not sure exactly where you're cutting but if they have a flat edge then you can cut right on the measurement where you need it. So that's my contact wire now taped fairly straight. I might just put a couple more little bits there just so it stays exactly on the line. I'm just using some frog tape it's fairly sticky and it comes off quite nicely. Right, so that's our contact wire. Now we need to do the uh, next bit which is a bit more complicated, the support wire. And for this, we want the natural curve to go the opposite way. Now, the reason I say this is because my first attempt at this I had them both pointing the same way and although I soldered in the dropper wires to try and keep the shape the whole thing slanted upwards and it sagged um, between the masts so they need to oppose each other the uh, angles of the natural curve so the way that these wires are going to be supported on the masts is I'm going to just bend the end to make a slight hook I can do that with these cutters you can do it with pliers as well, or tweezers if you have a fine pair. And now we have our hook. I'm going to line that hook up with the corner on the template. Now for the actual shape of it, it's going to sag a bit like that because it's meant to hold the contact wire, it's not meant to be tensioned, tensioned itself. So there's going to be a very, very broad angle on it. So whatever you find it sort of works as a nice shape. You can grab your cutters and then bend the other end to make the other hook exactly where it's going to be hooking onto the mast, which is obviously the, uh, 
the same length as the contact wire and bend that and then we can cut the end off and then we have a hook and we'll just tape that together now I do apologize if this tutorial isn't as clear as you'd like it to be I'm not the best at teaching Right, and there we have our two wires sort of parallel at a nice angle to each other ready for the droppers. So we can add our first dropper in. I'm just going to cut a bit of this wire off. Always be careful when cutting this because if you don't hold it, it does fling it everywhere. Now, the amount of droppers really depends on the region and sort of what continuity you're doing. I'm going to add four droppers, one near the end and then two sort of central around here. I'm going to measure to make sure I get a nice even gap between them. So I'll do the first one, 15mm from the end both sides. And then the other two I'll probably do 100mm from the end each side. And that should give us a nice even gap between them. So this bit of wire here, we're going to slide this wire underneath the support wire and then we're just going to push it until it touches the contact wire and that way it will sort of keep it in place as we're soldering. It is very important to have a clean soldering tip. It would help actually if it had a fine tip as well. I don't on this one so I'm just going to have to make do with what I've got. And then we can just add a bit of solder to the joint and then it's secure. What we do then is we can go our side cutters, line up where it's going to touch the support wire at the top and cut it off. Sometimes these will break off when you cut them as there's only a tiny amount of solder holding it together. That's why I prefer to use the gauge 11 as opposed to the gauge 9, which is the E string on a guitar. It's just slightly thicker, will give you a bit more support and structural integrity. Oh, yeah, it's gone. Right, let me do this and I'll get back to you. Okay, and there we have our first dropper wire intact and secure. As you can, as you can see, it's very difficult to do and it is very frustrating as well. So what I'll do is I'll get the rest of these wires done, so the other three droppers, and then I'll show you how it looks when, that, when that's done. Okay, so now we've just got to take it off the paper. Not as easy as it sounds, um, just because of the way I've taped it. So we can take off the top layer of tape, hopefully, on the bits that have double taped it. Always hold it while you're untaping it because it also it is a very delicate structure and you don't want to be pulling it or putting any strain on it. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is because this support wire is sitting on top of the tape and the contact wire is underneath, if we pull that off it's just going to try and rip it apart. So I can just cut the tape. And then when I pull it off, it will allow 
Well, it will release the catenary without pulling on it. See, that's come apart, so I just have to quickly re-solder that. Use a bit of tape, stick it down in position, and solder it back on. Okay, so we have our finished piece of catenary wire. It's straight, it looks a nice shape, it's relatively strong and it's going to hook onto our masts so we'll stick it on and see how it looks okay so here are our two masts the distance between is obviously predetermined pre-measured so and that is the length of our continuum wire which i shall bring in and then what i'm going to do is just use the two hooks i've made to hook it on to the top support bar And then what I can do with these dapple masts is try and line the contact wire through the registration arm at the bottom and that will keep it nice and straight and vertical. And there we go. Now um, I'm just going to use some poly cement to keep it in place as they do like to shoot off whenever they're knocked as I found out several times. Sorry about that, I just had to swing the mass around a bit as the piece of wire was slightly too short. Sorry, too, yeah, too short. So I had to just swing it around and allow it to reach. Well, here is the result. We have a fully electrified main line for the best part of it. The gantries were slightly different because the distance between the contact wire and the support wire is greater than that of the masts. So we've got quite a high well, we've got high, quite, quite a high support wire and then goes down onto the lower masts but overall it looks really good um, this catenary is in no way fit for a pantograph to be pushed against it as is the case with the class 90 it's fitted with a sprung pantograph if I was to release that it would just push the wire straight up bend it, maybe even knock it off the masts so I can't do it with any sprung pantographs with locos like the Revolution Trains Pendolino or the Dapo 86 um, they've got pantographs which you can fix in any position you want, so they'd happily go through this area. I could pop the pantograph up so it looks like it's nearly touching it. I wouldn't want to touch it though, um, just because there might be a few irregularities with blobs of solder and where the contact wires overlap, it's probably going to get caught. So, thank you for watching. This has been a very difficult task. Um, if you want to attempt it, then I wish you all the best. Hopefully you succeed in it. This has gone fairly successful. What I'll do is I'll just leave you with some running shots of some electric locos running under the new catenary. And I'll see you next time for the station build part four. Thank you very much and bye bye.